Wait. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning, and welcome to All Faiths Unitarian Congregation. My name is Susan Meissner, and I will be leading our service today. Here, you will find a diverse and inclusive spiritual community where we welcome people with many beliefs. You can bring your whole self, your full identity, your questioning mind, and your expansive heart. At All Faiths, we have more than one way of experiencing the world and understanding the sacred. No matter who you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, and no matter whom you love, you are truly welcome here. If you would like to know more about all faiths or membership, please see Fran Way after our service. Fran will be in our membership corner, which is just behind the folding doors. You are also invited to visit our website. I have a number of announcements this morning. Today at 1130 is the Talk Back program with Reverend C.J. McGregor. Monday at 12 noon is the book club meeting with Diane Chernow. This will be held at All Faiths in the community room. Tuesday at 7 p.m. is the Lectio Divinia meditation program on Zoom with Re Reverend C.J. McGregor. Wednesday at 10 a.m. is the 10 o'clock scholar program on Zoom and the topic is paganism. Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. is the Building Your Own Theology program on Zoom with Reverend C.J. McGregor. And Thursday at 2 p.m. is the Heart for the Homeless meeting on Zoom. Thursday at 7 p.m. is Child and Youth Discussions on Zoom. And Sunday at 9 a.m. is News Talk with Richard Keelan, and this will also be held in the All Faiths Sanctuary before the service. And those are this morning's announcements, unless I've missed anything. So now I'd like to ask everyone to please rise in body or spirit and sing together hymn number 361, Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. to the song open your ears to the song today will be a joyful day enter joy and come open your hearts everyone Afraid 
made of some change. Don't be afraid of some Joyce Rame, Joyce, could I ask you to come and light the chalice, please? And would everyone recite the words that are listed in your order of service? Love is the aspiration, the spirit that moves and inspires this face we share. Rightly understood, love can nurture our spirits and transform the world. May the flame of this chalice honor and embody the power and the blessing of the love we need, the love we give, the love we are challenged always to remember and to share. Thank you, Joyce. Now, if everyone would please remain seated and join in singing hymn number 413, Go Now in Peace, as our children join Chantel Rhodes on Zoom for their child and youth program. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the spirit of love surround you everywhere. Each Sunday we light candles for the joys and sorrows we have felt and would like to share with the congregation. If you'd like to light such a candle this morning, please come forward wearing your mask and light a candle and share your joy or sorrow. I'm going to light a candle for Marcia Bates. We're having her Odyssey on Monday night at 7 o'clock. And I hope you'll all join and learn all about her wonderful background and all the great things that she does for us here at All Face. We appreciate you very much, Marsha. Good morning, I'm Chris Stoller. I'm lighting this candle for my mother, who's 101 years old. 102 years old, sorry, she'll be 103 here in another couple of months. Anyway, it's also a thank you for all of, the, all of you that shared your thoughts and prayers and stuff. Mom was in the hospital for 11 days. We now got her into a nursing home facility and she's doing much, much better and stuff. So thank you and keep her, you know, in her, your thoughts and prayers because, you know, it's, it's she, 102 years old. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. My name is Robert Bennett, and uh, I'd like you all to please keep me, in me, keep me in your thoughts and prayers and so forth. Uh, this Wednesday, I'm going to be having a cornea transplant. For the last year, I haven't had any vision in my right eye uh, due to a prolonged fuchs dystrophy. Uh, this isn't the first time I've had cornea transplant in my right eye. Um, it's been unsuccessful in the past, over the last seven years. So uh, it's time to try it again. So thank you. Good morning, my name is Dottie Mayall, and I just have a quick joy, and that is my friend, my dear friend Mary Ellen Taylor is back with us, yay! Good 
morning. I'm Mary Ellen Taylor. I have a joy and a sorrow. My sorrow is that I have been diagnosed with widespread metastatic disease stemming from breast cancer. My joy is that I'm told I have probably two years, maybe more, maybe less, and I am 87 years old. I would like to thank all of those who have reached out with cards, emails, and words of encouragement. It's so good to know that I have so many friends here at All Faiths. I have another joy. My daughter, Mary Jo, is here with me. She's visiting from Minneapolis. Mm. Here you go. Right here. Thank you, Mary Ellen. I've missed your hats. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Linda Bigelow. Two weeks ago, Reverend CJ shared with us that someone in our congregation had a new rabbit and that was a joy. I've decided that if rabbits can bring joy, I can talk to you about gators bringing sorrow. I don't know if you follow the Florida Gators football team. I advise you against it. We had such high hopes. And you know, when the season falls apart, they look at the coach. And I don't know how many days perhaps the gentleman has with us in Gainesville. But thank you for listening and wait till next year. Thank you, Linda. Would anyone like me to bring the microphone to you? I'm lighting a candle this morning for John Conrad, who was recently hospitalized and had surgery. I'm lighting another candle because it's been nearly two years since I've seen many of your faces. And that's a joy. And I'm lighting this final candle for the joys and the sorrows that remain silent and in our hearts. It doesn't want to light, but that's okay. I'd like to ask everyone to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and let us turn our minds and our hearts to today's service and contemplate our blessings. Now I'd like to ask everyone to rise in body or spirit as we sing together hymn number 123, Spirit of Life.
Before our opening words, I want to draw your attention to our flowers this morning that I'm blocking. (laughs) They are a gift from the Southwest Florida red cloaks. Uh, We let them use our parking lot and they sent us flowers. So maybe our neighbors will someday do the same. Come now, come here this morning, all who are broken and cracked, come to this place where your shattered pieces are part of a mosaic. Here you will find welcome. Come now, all who are thirsty and burned, come to this place and drink from the cool waters that soothe your bedraggled soul. And come now, all of you, who long for the stars, come to this place, this congregation, where the vision of infinity is written upon the people's hearts. Set your compass to point towards hope, and here begin your journey home. It is good to be together. Daddy, are you coming home tomorrow? His little girl's voice echoes in the phone. Staring at his ticket to Seattle. Shakes his head and softly answers no. Thought that his new job would help the family. More money. They could buy a better life But now he'd gladly give back every penny Just to kiss his little girl goodnight Look at what you've got Before you ask for more Cause sometimes what you get Ain't what you bargain for If you lose more than Game. It's hard to even up the score. Look at what you got before you ask for more. He used to do the best that he was able. Some luxuries he had to sacrifice. But he always put enough food on the table Those days, they sure look good tonight Look at what you've got before you ask for more Cause Sometimes what you get ain't what you bargain for When you lose more than you gain It's hard to even up the score Look at what you got before you ask for more. There is only one thing for certain in this life. The treasures that we cherish most, money just can't buy. Look at what you've got before you ask for more. Cause sometimes what you get ain't what you bargain for If you lose more than you gain, even up the score Look at what you got Go on and look at what you got Look at what you got Before you ask for more
This morning's reading is titled, Pieces of Me, was written by Kimberly Trevisani. Kimberly lives in Whitesboro, New York with her husband and two sons. She has been a high school English teacher for 13 years, and she has given her seniors the This I Believe essay assignment for the last three years. Her students always wanted to know if she herself has written one, and now she can say that she has. And Kim wrote, My friend Pam died of cancer last December. She was 35 and happily married with two young children. The illness spread quickly, poisoning her body, but never her spirit. Although cancer robbed my friend of her life, it taught me to appreciate the little moments of my own. One fall day, Pam talked about her seven-year-old daughter, who had just learned to ride her bicycle without training wheels. Pam's face fell when she said, I missed it. The silence in the hospital room spoke volumes. I didn't need her to say any more. As a mother, I instantly understood the complexity of her simple, poignant statement. What Pam said struck a chord within me so deep that it still resonates today. I missed it because I'm here. I can't be a mom anymore. I won't see my children grow. I'm going to miss so much more. This spring, my son rode his bike for the first time. As I watched his clumsy initial attempts transform into confidence, tears welled in my eyes. I stopped jogging alongside him and watched the, the distance between us grow. All I could think of were Pam's words. I tried to burn his image into my mind to make sure I wouldn't forget what he looked like. And I cried. I cried for my friend and all that she will never witness. I cried for her daughter and son who didn't have a mom waiting at the end of the road. I cried for her husband who will experience these moments alone. As my son turned the corner and came back to me, a funny thing happened. I wiped my tears away and smiled. I needed to enjoy this moment because Pam was never able to. Pam would want me to cheer him on and wave my arms like a lunatic as he looped around the block. I needed to remember it for her, not despite her. How often do I get caught up in the small things of life? Packing lunches, making doctor's appointments, and folding laundry. Some of them called chores, but now I believe they are what make a life. These small details used to seem endless and overwhelming, but now it's okay. I want to be there to give my kids a bath after a day of playing outside in the mud. I want to scrub the grass stains out of their worn out threadbare jeans. And I want to rush through the aisles of a grocery store looking for a last minute dinner ingredient. I want to cram a haircut in between soccer games and kissing a scraped knee. I want to scramble for a babysitter so that my husband and I can finally have a date night. I appreciate my chaos because it's mine. These details are the pieces of me that make up my life, my moments, and I don't want to miss them. And so ends the reading. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing together hymn number 346, Come Sing a Song with Me. The words are printed in your order of service.
share a rose with me. Come share a rose with me. Come share a rose with me that I might know your That hymn always reminds me of one you could sing in a pub, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> you know, uh, the songs of Solomon in scripture were sung in pubs, ancient pubs. <laughs> I wonder if uh, you've ever played the game Trivial Pursuit. Anyone? Okay. If you haven't or you don't know what it is, uh, Trivial Pursuit is a board game. It comes from uh, Canada in which winning is determined by a player's ability to answer uh, general knowledge and popular culture uh, questions. And players move their pieces around the board and the squares they land on determines the subject of a question. They are asked uh, from a card. And these cards have six categories. If you remember, some of them are history, science, and nature and sports, which I'm never good at. And each correct answer allows the player's turn to continue. So if you give the right answer to the question, you continue your play. A correct answer on one of these, uh, one of the six uh, category headquarters uh, spaces earns a little plastic wedge that you can place into a round, looks like a pie. You can place a, the wedge into uh, your pie and the object of the game is to collect all six wedges uh, from each of the category headquarters. Uh, and then you return to the center hub, and when you ask a, you're asked a final question and you get it right, you are the winner. I remember playing uh, Trivial Pursuit while at college in the 1980s, um, but we made the game a little more interesting. If you answered your trivia question incorrectly, you were required to drink whiskey. <laughs> now that I think about it, none of us ever earned all six wedges <laughs> or finished a game. You know, this morning I might have titled our uh, message uh, wholeness rather than complete healing. If you think about complete healing, healing completely, we are really talking about wholeness or becoming whole. And not unlike the Trivial Pursuit game pieces and wedges, we want to make our piece whole by placing all six wedges. But I wonder, is it possible for us, is it possible for us to become whole, to put all those wedges in our game piece? We know it's impossible if you've been drinking whiskey, <laughs> but can we all have six wedges in the game of our lives? Author and humanist, excuse me, humanist, she may be a humanist, but she's also a humorist, Fran Leibowitz, one of my favorite writers and lecturers, tells us, there is no such thing as inner peace. There is only nervousness or death. <laughs> and the attempt to prove otherwise constitutes unacceptable behavior. But she also says that all God's children are not beautiful. Most of God's children are, in fact, barely presentable. If you're unfamiliar with Fran Leibowitz, I suggest you get to her quick and get to know her writing. Um, but I disagree with Leibowitz. We can have inner peace. We can have healing. But think of our search for peace and meaning as a game of trivial pursuit. Our game of life only has three wedges, mind, body, and spirit. And the key to healing the mind-body-spirit connection, that mind-body-spirit connection, is to first acknowledge that they work in unison. They work together. 
And life disrupts our mind-body-spirit connection, and we become so bogged down with work, commitments, family, social obligations that we forget to take care of ourselves. And to top it off, we lose sight of the things that bring us the most joy. You've heard people talk about the connection between the mind, the body, and the spirit, and many people have a hazy interpretation of what it means, but it simply pertains to our mental physical, emotional, and spiritual health. It's all three together, wholeness. You have likely noticed that when something is troubling you, uh, when, some, when you, something is troubling you, troubling you mentally or emotionally, you actually begin to manifest physical symptoms. Has that ever happened to you? Your heart starts racing, you have a hard time sleeping because you keep thinking about the problem and you you begin to feel lethargic and fatigued. And this is when the mind, body, and spirit connection are out of balance. However, when your mind is at peace, when your mind is at peace, you uh, are more likely to be happier, kinder, more grateful, and you're not so embroiled from within. And physically, you are relaxed and ready to take on what life throws your way. But dealing with struggles is a part of life. It is a part of life that cannot always be avoided. And sometimes we can be so hurt emotionally that we struggle to function in our daily lives. And this is when our emotional wellness has been compromised and it affects every area of our lives, including our mind, our body, and our spirit. And so what does emotional healing have to do with the mind, the body, and spirit? We can't separate who we are, meaning I cannot separate my mind from my body, nor from my heart from my mind. We can't separate who we are. And I'm connected, mind, body, and spirit. You are connected mind, body, and spirit to all of me. I'm connected mind, body, and spirit to all of me. And it works the same thing way for you. And the poet Mark Nepo reminds us to make our lives a prayer, he says, to stretch through the great pain of our lives in order to learn what it means to be alive. Nepo tells us all of our life can be have the quality of prayer, a sacredness, all of our life. All parts of our lives, our mind, our body, our spirit, can have the same quality of prayer. He writes, all that pain has taught me is to unfold again as if never before and be the prayer. And my colleague, the Reverend Lynn Strauss, tells us we all have wounds, old wounds and new wounds. We all have sorrow. We can't avoid it. And as we struggle with the pain of both body and spirit, we find ourselves coming here, coming to church, to this congregation, whether you're here physically or you're watching online, to this hour of celebration of joys and sorrows of life. And as we struggle to heal body, mind, and spirit, we engage in the spiritual practice of returning, the spiritual practice of returning each Sunday. We come to a sacred place, a holy place. We pause, we listen, we reflect. We let the music and the words wash over us. We, in our unique Unitarian Universalist way, make our lives a prayer. There's a beautiful book titled uh, My Bright Abyss that I read recently. Uh, It's... My Bright Abyss, Meditation of a Modern Believer by Christian Wyman, a writer and poet. And Mr. Wyman wrote, during the years he struggled to survive cancer. He questioned whether there was meaning in his illness. He questioned whether there was anything he could put his trust in. And facing death, he questioned the idea of God. And Wyman writes, not long after I first learned that I was sick in the dim time, travel, multiple doctors, an endless test, when it seemed that I might be in danger of dying very soon, I began to meet every Friday afternoon with the pastor of the church in my neighborhood. 
he says, I think he, like anyone whose faith is healthy, actively craved instances in which that faith might be tested. So we argued for an hour every Friday, he says, though that verb is completely wrong for the complex, respectful, difficult interactions we had. He says, nothing was ever settled. And yet those hours and the time afterward, when strangely enough, I didn't so much think about all that we had discussed as feel myself freed from such thoughts are among the happiest hours of my life. Grief, he says, was not suspended or banished, but entered and answered. Answered not by theology and not by my own attempts to imaginatively excuse me, imaginatively circumvent theology, but by the depth and integrity and essential innocence of the communion occurring between two people. When we ourselves or a loved one is sick or suffering, we of the Western postmodern world do not as a rule turn, to, uh, turn first to a religious or spiritual ritual we first look for answers. We Google, which I'm not allowed to do because I'm convinced I have everything that they tell me I do. We call for a conference with the doctor or the medical team. We seek out the latest therapy and we try to answer the existential questions that begin with why. And we try to figure out how to bring order to the chaos of illness and to make peace with the not knowing or not being in control. And being spiritual, being spiritual is centered and uh, is being centered and having an understanding that you are part of something greater than yourself. That's what being spiritual means, being centered and understand that you are part of something greater than yourself. And facilitating a healthy spirit includes being part of a community to share yourself with others as we do today and to give without expecting anything tangible in return as you will during the offertory. <laughs> A healthy spirit though requires love, requires peace, requires understanding and it requires you to tell yourself I am alive, I am alive and tell yourself there must be something more, there must be something more than I need to contribute in this life. That is the core of what it means to live your life as a prayer. Telling yourself there must be something more that I need to contribute in this life and that I am alive. And also, that is the core of meaning. If there is any to be found in illness, in pain, and in struggle, something calls us to life. Something calls us to life. And something calls us to move toward healing, move toward healing in the mind and the body and the spirit. And we come to moments of crisis, moments of pain, and we are called forward. We find the meaning, there is something more I need to contribute in this life. That's the meaning, there is something more I need to contribute in this life. And that we've had trouble getting behind, or excuse me, I've had trouble getting behind uh, the popular bucket list idea. I believe what most people yearn for is meaning. Meaning, not satisfaction. What we really long for is affirmation of our worth and our dignity and not one more satisfying adventure. What we really long for is the chance to make one more contribution, make one more contribution in this life. And healing happens through communion, a profound connection with life. And for most of us, that connection comes in relationship. But let us not stay within our own individual experiences of pain and healing. Christian Wyman writes, the temptation is to assume our pain is more singular than it is. But in truth, experience means nothing if it does not move beyond itself. 
if it doesn't have meaning, if it doesn't project meaning beyond ourselves. We are, each of us, every single one of us, meant to be a lens for truths that we ourselves cannot see. And philosopher and theologian Soren Kiergaard once said, the system cannot include the systemizer. To live in faith is to live toward a truth that we can but dimly sense, if at all. And to die in faith is to leave an afterimage whose dimensions and meanings we could never even have guessed at. He says, something of us is saved and made available for others. Wyman's point and mine is that through the process of entering our pain and struggle and finding communion in relationship as we heal, our wounds become ways to teach one another. We are not for ourselves alone. Our healing path toward is, our path is toward love. And thus we gather on Sunday mornings, acknowledging our wounds and our pains, blessing one another with silence and song, and together following healing paths and learning from one another. Pain is a part of living. None of us can escape it. But here we pause to share the healing of body, of mind, of spirit. That's what living on this earth is all about, building relationships and making meaningful connections. We need each other. We need each other to thrive and to live a full life, building a support system of trusted friends. And if we build a support system of trusted friends, that surely makes a living more joyous. So let us think about mind and body and spirit of those three wedges that we work toward, find meaning to complete our game piece, which is our lives. May it be so. Oh, if you're new, or you don't remember, or you haven't been here in two years, we still tell jokes before the offertory, because laughter makes you generous. generous. That's right. But first, I would like to thank um, all of you, those here in our sanctuary, and those uh, joining us uh, online, for your generous support to um, support our mission of justice and peace and compassion and to support our ministries and our staff. Thank you. We're grateful. If you'd like to, if you're watching, if you're not in the sanctuary and you're watching us online and you'd like to make a donation, um, you can do so by following uh, the directions or the, using the information under the video that you're watching. So, oh, where'd it go? Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes uh, technology is not our friend. Okay, well, I can't find it, but I know it. Um, so there is uh, one Sunday Unitarian Universalist service. Uh, the, the, the service is spirited, and there's a man in the back yelling, Hallelujah, Amen, Hallelujah, Amen. And so one of the ushers walks up to the man, um, and he says, Excuse me, sir, we don't do that here. And uh, the man says, Well, I found religion. And the usher says, I assure you, sir, you did not find that here. <laughs> the morning offering will now be given and received. There's a bright light in his eyes I can't explain. It's the gift of youth that nothing can replace. 
only four feet tall, but I swear he knows it all. And I'm a better man because he's in my world. He picks me up. words and the way he ties his shoes and the quicker I go round I know he'll always slow me down cuz I'm a better man because he's in my world he's honest and he tells me how he feels in his own way just what he mean yeah my companion and my friend I know he'll be there in the end yes he will though it sounds strange oh how true it seems that with him Living all, all my dreams I'm his father, he's my son And our lives have just begun And I'm a better man because he Can't believe how much he's taught me I'm a better man because he's in my world I'm a better man because he's in my world. We leave this morning blessed by our connections to one another our connection to the spirit of life. And may we walk lightly, may you walk lightly, that you see that life is below your feet. Spread your arms if you have wings and if you could dance through the air. And feel the joy of breath in your lungs and the fire in your heart. Live to love and be a blessing on this earth. Blessed be. In the silence of the morning, or in the ruckus of a crazy day, whether I am home to hear it, or I'm due. Precious. 
precious day oh when the last day of my lifetime is about to finally fade away there is something i'll take with me when it's time to go We'd like to thank Reverend C.J. McGregor for his inspiring message today. We'd like to thank Robert Bidney for his music and his original con compositions. Chantelle Rhodes for our child and youth program. Regina Kilmartin on sound. No, Regina Kilmartin on camera and El Edrod, El Ed Elrod on sound. And Joe Gayton, our sexton. It is good to be connected and, st and to stay together in whatever way we can. And now I'd like to ask Joyce to come and extinguish the chalice and please join us in reciting the words that are in our order of service. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. Go now in peace and see you next Sunday. Thank you.